In the beginning, there were only regular fights. Simple and mundane tiffs between humans and other things. But as the things learned to fight back, something new was created. The Boss Fight The boss fight increased in difficulty, all the way to Nightmare Mode. Soon, there was no hope for the mere mortal human. But then, the greatest sage and the greatest battlemaster started to share their wisdom with others. You're now about to listen to that wisdom. Great wisdom of Austin and Aubrey. And I am also Austin. Whoa, that's crazy. I know. What a twist. I'm just trying out my Austin Halloween costume because we're getting closer. I scrapped the Scooby Doo idea. Oh, okay. Now I'm going to pretend uh, to be you. I, I still haven't decided, but I guess I could just go as Aubrey. Well, I mean, that'll work. If I'm going to steal your identity, you can steal my identity. Oh, so we're talking, we're not talking Halloween. We're just talking full identity swap. Well, I don't, I don't know. Maybe. There's some perks to being you i don't know if there are any perks to being me you currently make more money than i do so that's yeah but my my job is to put up with small children that i teach to play very loud instruments yeah i i don't think i could do that yeah there's a there's a pretty big trade-off there yeah i think probably worth the increase in salary (laughs) well austin we have probably the biggest boss fight on our hands besides halloween halloween is the second biggest boss fight that we have right now but right the biggest one is the giant water tornado currently attacking florida ah you're talking about uh the old the old michael mikey the good old hurricane mikey hurricane mike hurricane (sighs) m dog yeah like like you said we we are from a part of the country that gets a lot of tornadoes. Yeah, uh, land hurricanes. Yeah, like the the hurricanes of land is what we've always said. Adding adding water in to the equation just makes it feel it's just a whole different beast, right? You know, because I can I can take on some wind in a tube, okay, but like you throw water in there. Everything's all wet and soggy. No, thank you. It's just, it's like an uncomfortable tornado. It's essentially what it is. It's a tornado that, like, soaks through to your socks, and it, ugh, that's the worst feeling, is wet socks. So we have, we have some, some wisdom, I guess, to pass on to our, our friends currently, currently fighting against the water tornado. Number one is that water tornadoes are a lot like sharks in the way that there's water, and if you want them to go away, you just have to punch them in the eye really hard. It's number one. Right. So punch the eye of the hurricane. Yes. So eye of the eye of the water tornado. You get in there. You punch it. It'll retreat. You just you just uh, keep punching away until until it goes bye bye. Yeah, this is more of a collaborative effort because I mean it is you know it is a little bit bigger than a shark a hurricane is but you know you get it you get it good enough in the eye and the problem solved right yeah you just all have to gather in one location where the eye of the of the water tornado is you all stand there and you all collectively throw one big punch it's like it's like in horton here's a who when the whole town comes together and like yells so they can be heard it's like that but with punches with punches which is yeah. basically the only thing we're experts on. Yeah, it's like that's that's fifty percent of what we bring to the table. The other fifty percent, of course, is poison. But as we all know, water tornado doesn't have a digestive system. So, and speaking of digestive systems, number two, 
just drink the water out of the hurricane. Then it's just a normal tornado, and you can Pecos Bill that guy and just lasso <laughs> him and throw him away somewhere. Put him in a yeah. little bottle, because tornadoes like to be in bottles. Yeah, you take uh, you take all the water out, you you sap it, you 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 run it dry, <laughs> then what what else what else does it have? Just wind. Please, just wind. I walk in the wind all the time. Yeah, just put on a light jacket. You're immune to it all of a sudden, just because you yeah. drank up have all you the ever water. Ever heard of something called a wind breaker? It's like yeah, a karate chopping the wind. Yeah, exactly. You walk you walk directly into the wind. The wind hits your good armor, and then poof, it's gone. It's just, it's broken. It collapses on the ground. All right, so number three <laughs> is you you get everyone that's affected by the hurricane. It's in a spiral, right? It goes, it goes I think, clockwise most of the time. If you get everybody to run around in a big circle counterclockwise, it's done. That's very good, yes. It's like it's like in those pools that everybody used to have in their backyard, and they were small. And everybody's favorite game was to make a whirlpool in the middle of the pool, and and then just try to reverse it and things like that. That was a fun game. That was a fun game. So this is just a big fun game, right? Hurricane's just a big fun game. Have you tried getting everybody in a line and saying "Red Rover, Red Rover, Hurricane Mikey, come over"? And then oh, yeah. watch him see that he can't break that line because you're all so strong with biceps and triceps and other seps. And also friendship. And friendseps. You need to get yourself some friendseps and then challenge Hurricane Mikey to a game of Red Rover. Yeah, flex those friendseps. Flex, flex on them. Guys, just flex on them. All you gotta do is flex. And it'll just be like, oh, shit. And it'll run away right back into the ocean. So anyway, uh, Hurricane Mikey, obviously not not great. It uh, already passed. and But we're ready for the next one, which yeah. is will be Hurricane Nike. And <laughs> for that one, you just, have, you just have to do it. Just do it. Do all the punches, the Red Rover, the water sucking, the... Whatever the third one was. The, the flex your friendseps. Flex your friendseps. Just do it. Are you ready for a question? I, <laughs> I am. Dear Austin and Aubrey, how do I do American Ninja Warrior? And that's from, seriously, how do they climb up that wall in Washington? American Ninja Warrior. Not to be confused with Canadian Ninja Warrior or American Viking Warrior. Now, I love the shit out of some American Viking Warrior. Way more, way more battle cries. Way big more beards. Yeah, big beards, pointy hats, hatchets, big yes. ore rowing battles, and then pillaging. Also, pillage. The pillaging contest is probably one of my favorites. Yeah, the pillaging contest, it's my favorite episode every season. The strangest one is always the who can speak Swedish or Norwegian or Finnish the best. Because nobody can decide what language the Vikings spoke. But we know it's one of those those northern European cold countries. That's what yeah, we know. Basically, but yeah, it's basically just who can be the most convincing. Yeah, it's just kind of like... Make words that sound like it. Nobody. It's funny because nobody on the show that judges knows how to speak any of those languages. They're just like right. that sounds good. But this, but this is not that show. This is this is its lesser cousin, American Ninja Warrior. American Ninja Warrior. So, I, I mean, we can we can we can sit here and, and split hairs and say, well, you need to get on a training regiment and you need to build a wall, build your own wall and then climb it for practice. But that's, I mean, everyone can do that, right? What's going to give you a competitive edge and take you and your ninja warrior-ness to the next level, right? And for that, what you need to do is create yourself a persona, because what they don't tell you is that the person with the best backstory and the best character gets two tries 
on all of the tracks. But the people with bad backstories and non-compelling reasons and motivations, they only get to do it once. Right, yeah. So really put some thought into the kind of character that you're portraying. And you're going to get, not only are you going to like feel better and more motivated because you're, you're, you're embodying this character and their motivations, but also you're going to get a lot of community support. And just like in the hunger games, like fans are going to dial in and give you presents that are going to help you. Mm -hmm. Do you, Hey, you want to go back and forth and throw out some character concepts for American Ninja Uh, Warrior? Yes, I would love to. All right. You get to go first great because i'm totally prepared i know uh so uh so what so what what i have what i have workshopped here for you today is so you you have to be careful when you give like the edgy backstory right because people are gonna think that oh that's that's so passe oh yeah uh a a bandit party killed my entire family and now i'm seeking revenge like that's been done before you gotta you gotta add you gotta add some layers right so here's what onion man dress up as shrek sorry you said layers oh onions and ogres have layers it's dress up as they shrek you're adding do. some layers to it yes continue so, with your thought <laughs> no, scrap, scrap, scrap what I said. You are now Shrek. And you're, doing, you're doing American Ninja Warrior, and as Shrek. And every time that you finish an obstacle, you just have to turn to everybody and yell at them to get out of your swamp. And then you've created your character. Yeah, that which is which is great because like if you if you pitch that to the the producers they're gonna love that and they're gonna make instead of like regular water or like netting that you would fall into if you swamp failed an obstacle, water it's actually gonna be swamp water yeah yeah and then you have a distinct advantage because you fall in the swamp water that was that could almost be intended because you live in a swamp you know i thought this vein was gonna go somewhere but then I just said Shrek, and now I realized I can't combine an ninja, American Ninja Warrior with Shrek. Good. You you have you have put us in a in a bind. I I I put us in an Amanda Binds. You Amanda Binds it. Dang. Uh, How anyway. Oh, hey, speaking of throwback, also instead of Shrek, why don't you compete as a dancing lobster? I mean, you'll just you'll win the hearts of thousands. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like that every time that you come out and it's like your turn for the obstacle course, they're like, "Bring out the dancing lobster," and you and you do a little jig, and then and you, you use your big meaty it. claws. You crush it. Yeah, and your big you use meaty claws. Big meaty claws to grab onto all those, all those handholds, and you just you win. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Then, like, you, and then on the way out of every obstacle you you use those meaty claws and you break a few of like the rings and other things like that to where you're making it disadvantageous for the next competitor you won't have to compete with them later i have a very i have a a political idea for american ninja warrior and i think you're gonna like it i think you're gonna like it so the biggest obstacle the one that it's really known for is the wall, right? Is the big wall at the end. So what you uh, need is a person of Hispanic descent who has pro- uh, preferably a family in Mexico still to say that they're going to defeat the wall and that this is for their family back in Mexico and this is me putting it to Trump and it could have a just a, a shirt that says resist on it or something like that and then Mm. at the very end when they get to the wall and they climb up it no problem and they they make a big political statement i think it'll work i think it'll get a lot of audience attention uh for people that both dislike the idea of the wall and people that do like the idea of the wall i just think it'll 
bump up the ratings, and everybody will yeah, either it, love or hate you, and that's the best part of a character. Yes. As it'll be incredibly polarizing, which is going to create a lot of traffic, like to the show. Exactly. And and if you and if you come up with that and you pitch that idea and you really sell it, like you're on for another season, easy, right? Even if you win need... the whole thing, you're back on for another season. Yeah, like you're you're like the guy to beat, or like then you you control the wall. You know, it's your it's your wall now. What's another? The, give me another concept. Well, I was I was gonna say that I'll cut out other... all the stupid shit before it that I said okay. and interrupted you with. Okay, no, uh, so character concept. Um, so you are. I have nothing. No, you gotta Wait, come up with okay. something. Play with me, okay. Austin. Play in I'm this trying. space. I'm trying. It's a very intimidating space. Do you want some words that I can throw out there? Just some words this this is my this is my problem i'm i'm not a i'm not a great character comer upper with her oh all right Um, so the first i picked up a random word generator i'm just gonna throw you some words all right okay okay patient recommendation peer medicine Imposter. Victory. Prestige. Ooh, what if you were a magician on the American Ninja Warrior? Okay. So the, okay. Yeah. So you got you got to learn some sleight of hand. You got to create some illusions. But you go on American Ninja Warrior. You 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 get them like at first you start you start with something simple. You do like a card trick. You talk about like how you practice magic for your background or whatever, um, and people will be like, "Oh, what a fun quirk!" But then you go up to the first obstacle, the first challenge. You throw a sheet over your head, and then it collapses because you've disappeared. Boom! You're at the end of the course. Wow! How did that happen? That's crazy. This guy is the ultimate ninja because he did the course so fast. He practically vanished. How does anybody like? How does anybody follow that? Like, this guy is the ultimate ninja warrior because he's got stealth. He can just dash, blink from place to place. Like, boom. Where is he? He's gone. And, okay, if you have magical powers, I don't know if this is the best use of your ability to disappear in one place and reappear in another. I think that maybe the world needs you to do something a little bit better than win American Ninja Warrior. But if you don't have powers and you're just trying to like kind of cheat the system, maybe you're maybe you're a set of quadruplets, you know? And you you just you do the whole sheet thing, but then you just you just kind of hop in the water real fast, right? While your your friend your your other quadruplet is already on the other side of the obstacle. And you know that's really funny because that really is literally the plot of the Prestige, is that one of you hops in the water and the other one reappears yep. somewhere else. The yeah, the other thing I was thinking because I because you did say Prestige earlier, I was thinking that so if you have a twin, you can just combine yourselves into one one life, and that way, like you can literally be in two places at once. Which is like the ultimate like shadow clone jutsu, right? Yeah, like, you both you. dress up as the Naruto, and you yes. disappear in one place with Tesla coils, and one of you takes a nice little swim, but the other one gets onto the other side of the track, and then you go up to the next obstacle course, and he does the whole Tesla coil thing, and you appear on the other side, and what's that? You're wet. What a strange thing to happen when you're struck by lightning, but oh well, I guess it works real good. <laughs> That's how you beat American Ninja Warrior. Are you ready for another question? I am. Okay. Oh, good thing we talked about the wall earlier. So, oh. I, I, this, <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't just say that. <clears throat> Let's see if I can do it in the voice. <clears throat> how do you build the best space force out of all the space forces asking for a friend that's from gmail well, but it okay. sounds like it's from twitter <laughs> it did sound 
really Twitter-esque. You know, I can't do a Donald Trump impression, but I can do a really good impression of Trevor Noah doing a Donald Trump impression. That's exactly the vibe I get from that. <laughs> it's like how I can't do a Harry Carey impression, but I can do a Will Ferrell impersonating Harry Carey impression. <laughs> and and just for for everyone's curiosity, what does that sound like? Shit, hold on. I may have to get a few tries because it's been a while since I did it. Hey, Norm! If you were a hot... Oh, fuck. Nope. <laughs> if you were a hot dog, would you eat yourself? Nah, I'm getting into Scooby-Doo. Scratch that. <laughs> it it's is, been... It is a little... It's... A little, it is a little rut row raggy. Alright, anyway, so Space Force. Space Force. <laughs> We've talked about Space Force on this show before. We're a big fan of the Space Force. So, I feel like by virtue of building a Space Force, you've got the best one, right? Because you're the only one? Yeah, because you're the only one. But if you're but if you're looking for longevity, like, you build a Space Force, everyone's going to get a Space Force, right? So you got you to gotta make sure your Space Force is... The spaciest and forcest of all the Space Forces. The Space Forciest of all so you gotta you gotta you gotta flex your space forceps that's stupid <laughs> why are we doing this i, I don't know okay so up. anyway but we're, we are doing it so this is this is where we are so austin yes. you gotta make your space force stand out against all the other space forces Right. right. So you got to be you got to be the number one pioneer of space force training, preparedness, and technology. Right. So you got so training. Let's start with training. You got to make sure that you're you're properly acclimated to space force weather and <laughs> conditions. <laughs> So, so you do the standard astronaut astronaut training, like you you get in a you get in a big old spinny ball, uh, you you practice your landing, uh, and you learn how to forage for moon cheese, because uh, you're gonna spend you're gonna spend long time out in space on the surface of planets, uh, fighting alien life. You're gonna you're gonna need to be able to forage, and and survive. In, in the space wilderness. In the space wilderness. And what I think is that maybe we should have, you know, one officer stationed at every planet in the solar st- system. And that includes Pluto, uh, even though Pluto's a dwarf dwarf planet, not a dwarf, dwarf planet. A dwarf planet. Yeah. Maybe, you know, these people that are commanding the forces on each planet have superpowers specific to each planet and they all stand for love and justice and maybe they're all teenage girls that can transform into superheroes and this is a great idea how did you come up with that i don't know it just came to me in a dream huh interesting okay so yeah I like, so the one I like... on the, the one on the moon is going to be called Sea Dog Space Rock. Yes. Yes. Sea Dog Space Rock. I can't take credit for that one. That one's 100% ha- uh, Hana's D&D character where she made herself Sailor Moon. She, But she she said, she, no, it's going to be called Sea Dog Space Rock. Okay, so <laughs> very good. But okay, so, so okay, we've got we've got magical magical girl commanders on each planet. Let's start from let's start from the sun, all right. So, okay. the the person that lives on the sun. So the the so the, so the person who lives on the sun is like the admiral, right? They yes. are the they are the the person in charge. So admiral admiral uh, hot star, admiral hot star. I like that one. Then we go in a so, little bit, and then we've got Mercury. Which is also a sailor, so maybe. Mm, L- Lieutenant. Um, hmm. Lieutenant Planet Number One. <laughs> uh, what? What does Merc? What does Mercury have? What? What is? 
like what what is what is the you're visiting the planets right mercury is the fastest around the sun right okay and then it's speedy it's speedy maybe um speedy seafarer or salty dog swiftness salty dog swiftness yeah okay table that i like that well uh venus just big big and uh big and gassy and sulfurous right not not suitable for life right Uh, no no it's it's poison it's literal poison okay so it's just a big old poisonous ball pilot poison the poisonous pilot pilot poisonous pilot Poisonous uh, ship pilot because pilots go for airplanes and this is clearly a naval escapade, and right. so it has to be sea based. Well, now it's space based, but you know what I mean. We're basing it on the sea because everybody like every, knows. But every every depiction of like space ranks has always used like navy terms, right? Right, because the sea is like the space of the Earth. Right. You use but stars wh- to navigate. You're on a but, big old moving thingy. You can drown out there. What? Yeah, but what I'm saying is we're, we're doing new uncharted territory, right? We are making the number one space force. So why don't we come up with new titles and a new ranking system to properly match the greatest space force of all space forces. So like right. we don't we don't want we don't want admirals and uh captains and ensigns like we want we want new powerful space force titles. You're right. So I Fuck. feel like I feel like the the commander, the admiral, is probably something like Galactor. Big man. Galactor. Oh. <laughs> so like yeah, Galactor. Which so you could you could just call them Galactor because that sounds really intimidating. Or you can call them I don't know Galactor. Galactor Michael. Prime. Oh yeah, Galactor Prime. I like that. Yes. So Galactor Prime is is like the the leader of space force and he lives in the sun yeah he he lives he lives in the sun yes he's a big fiery man made of fire cuz we injected him with the the dna of fire and now he lives he can live in the star and he controls everything right from so the Galact- star base. galactor prime and his second in command who lives I think his assistant is probably who lives in Mercury. It's the yeah, closest one. It's, it's closest got it. By, yeah. If you're if you're a, a secretary or whatever another word for that would be. Well no, cuz I th- I think if he I think if he has like assistant assistant or a secretary, they probably live in the sun as well. But if we're talking about second in command. Yeah, second in command has to be. That's that's Mercury. Mercury. And the title Astro Blaster. Yes, Astro Blaster is number two on the space force food chain yeah yeah mercury super fast astro blaster venus the poison planet is going to be star choker star choker (laughs) which is gonna be a really strange thing for galactor prime because he's a star now and he's like well i mean venus is star chokers real good at their job but you know maybe they're gonna try to choke me one day but it's just because venus is powerful and poisonous so it just chokes people yeah it's real venus is really a wild card earth is going to be called first rock from now on because it's going to be the first first rock rock. first rock it's gonna be called first rock okay now the person commanding First Rock, now that we've renamed Earth to First Rock, is going to be called the First Rocketeer. The First Rocketeer. Yeah. It's actually a triumvirate 
and so that that word does not actually is not applicable to this concept it's going to be um they're going to be three people that command first rock and they're going to be called the three rocketeers yes yes mars is going to be called galactor alpha because he's the big man the big hard man he's in charge of commanding the he he leads the battles overall and he just happens to have the same name as galactor prime but it's alpha instead because he's big and strong and this is this is this is good for for a couple reasons the first is that when other space forces are trying to figure out the power structure of our space force they're going to look at galactor prime and be like oh that's that's the big guy and they're going to look at uh galactor alpha and they're going to be like oh so this guy's got to be like also high up the chain right but he's actually not like yeah he might he might be the big red rock that leads battle but there's actually quite there's actually quite a few people ahead in line, right? So they think they're cutting off our supply lines, but they're not. So a little little deception, right? Right. And then after Galactor Alpha, we've got the asteroid belt, and we'll just call those the Pebble Boys, the good old Space Pebble Boys. The space the, the, so the Pebble Boys work directly under. They report to Galactor Alpha. And that's the brunt of our, like, infantry, as it were. Yeah, we load them up with... Boots on the ground, (laughs) front line of defense. We turn each Uh, of those little pebble boys into a soldier, and they go from planet to planet, and they just fuck people up. You want an extinction? Don't worry, we got an asteroid to hit you and get rid of all the dinosaurs that live on this planet. We got you. So then, then we move to the outer reaches. So... Jupiter... Yeah, we've got... We've Which got is going to just move to the name Stupider. We're going to rename that one. Yeah, because he's just a big old brute. He's a big old dummy. He's got lots okay. of little... And he's 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 dumb. He's never gotten into the whole, you know, parent planning process, the family planning process, because look at all those moons he's got. He's got so many moons, little moons that just spawned right off his Jupiter body. Yeah, Jupiter's really like more of a family legacy. Yeah, and so we're yeah. just gonna call him Daddy Jupe, because he's also a <laughs> Daddy, rap artist. Daddy Jupe, yes. Daddy, Daddy Jupe just runs... dropped the sickest album, <laughs> and he runs Jupiter the Stupider, and all of his little little moons that are named after his albums. You know, Daddy Jupe's albums that are just floating around in there. And he's in charge of the music industry. And he has nothing to do with the Space Force, really, besides morale for the troops. Yeah, which is important. You know, it's you got you to gotta think about the, the, the mental well-being of your troops. And that's why, you know, he goes, Daddy Jupe just goes over to sat turntables and then just drops a few sick beats with those, with those big old rings that make music. And it works. Hey, uh, if so, there was, if you could drop a needle like an old timey record onto the rings of Saturn, what do you think the music would be? I have to imagine Daft Punk would play. Probably be Daft Punk, right? Yeah. And maybe Under Pressure by Queen. I just think that because planets have a lot of pressure on them. They do. To... They they exert a lot of pressure. Yeah, which is why there is Uranus, which is there for the jokes. Uh yeah, Uranus yeah, Uranus we've already established is that's that's the keeper of memes. Like that's the joke economy. That's the joke economy. So, so really Uranus is actually the financial advisor for Space Force. <laughs> and the person who runs Uranus is named Butthole. <laughs> that's a little on the well, maybe not on the nose, but his name is I mean he didn't choose his name it was given to him but he's he's made no, something he, of it no he is he's the uh he's the ass pirate yeah he sits there and he's really boring too hello my name is butthole and I am here to file your taxes yeah like he, yo what's up I'm daddy jupe up in the building 
bury me. <laughs> oh, Daddy Jupe. I just, I need you to tell me all of the financial statements that you've made so far this year, and, uh... I can't do this conversation between just me being <laughs> butthole and Daddy Jupe. Butthole and Daddy Jupe. <laughs> what a terrible my fa- sitcom. My favorite space sitcom. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so then we move to Pluto, who's basically like... No, we this... still have Neptune, bud. Oh, shit. <laughs> I forgot about Neptune. And that one's uh, going to so... go with the Sailor Moon reference, so we're just going to call it Water Dog, Water Dog. Yeah, and that's like, water-based. basically, Neptune is the Navy commander, but of space. And then Pluto is going to still be named Pluto, but... The commander of Pluto is going to be named Goofy, the other Disney dog. <laughs> and that's going to be that. <laughs> Looks like enemy troops are approaching. Yeah, he's just, he's he's fodder. <laughs> yeah. We've already treated Pluto crappy enough, but we, yeah, we still need is... some more use out of him. Uh, so, that's, so that's Space Force, and I think that's how you get the best one. Well, anyway, that is all the time that we have for this episode, we are currently up in space, and we gotta we gotta make it back to Earth because I gotta sorry first rock because I gotta I got a meeting I gotta go to. But we hope you've enjoyed this episode, as with all of our episodes, you almost certainly have enjoyed as well. And we hope that you continue listening to the show. We really love community support and the people that we have had. Uh, talk to us about the show and leave us reviews uh we really appreciate that Uh, the best thing for you to do if you like the show is to tell somebody about it whether that's leaving an aforementioned review uh, or simply just telling a friend and saying hey i've got this great podcast that uh don't oversell us don't say great just i got this (laughs) podcast leave out descriptors do you you know of podcasts because i have have one podcast that is a podcast you can listen to with your ears and you will have a reaction to it uh so yeah uh thanks guys we appreciate you <laughs> and we love you you can check us out on all the social medias we got a twitter it's at boss fight cast you can send in questions to boss fight cast at gmail.com we would love your questions we honestly i think we like the questions for this week and the past few weeks and everything else like that it's been a lot of fun trying to answer your questions i'm sorry we're very bad at advice but but, you know point of the show that's never the point of the show it was just for us to say goofy things yeah we also have a facebook page which is boss Ugh. we also have a facebook page which is boss fight with austin and aubrey and that is basically all the things that we have thank you all right cool Anyway, yes, thank you again for listening. Tune in next time. And, I don't know, train yourself for American Ninja Warrior. This has been Boss Fight with Austin and Aubrey. I am Austin. And I'm Aubrey. And don't forget, punches and poisons. Cue music. Daddy! Daddy!